I will be talking about facilitating peer relationships for children with autism spectrum disorders. The reason I chose this topic is because I've worked in a preschool where I've had two different children with ASD, and I wanted to learn more about how I could help them interact more meaningfully with their peers. So how does autism affect peer relationships? Well, according to the American Speech Hearing Association, impairments in social communication are one of the core features of ASD, specifically in the areas of joint attention, social reciprocity, and social cognition. Joint attention is that shared focus of two or more individuals on the same object or event. So mom and child are both focused on a train toy or both focused on looking at something out the window together. Social reciprocity is the back and forth interaction between people where the behavior of one person influences the behavior of the other. And social cognition are those mental processes involved in perceiving, attending to, remembering, thinking about, and making sense of the people in your social world. Peer interactions are super important for quality of life. So as parents and professionals, we need to do what we can to facilitate those interactions for children with ASD. When children with ASD have good social engagement, other important behaviors like language can also be positively affected. Rogers in 2000 discusses the area of peer mediated intervention. So this is when typical peers are taught to initiate some play organizing behaviors like sharing, helping, giving affection or giving praise. So the peers role play these behaviors with adults. And once they've learned these interactions, they use the same ones in interacting with children with ASD. The peers are essentially trained to be the interventionist. This strategy helps with generalization because it takes place in natural contexts and with typical communication partners. Use of adult partners in this type of thing is not, does not typically generalize as well because it is not as natural of an environment for a child. This is a great strategy that can also be used at home. Parents can train siblings in how to do these interactions to be implemented with their child with ASD. So another strategy is peer tutoring using incidental teaching techniques. And this, is, this means that the techniques are embedded within natural context and interactions. So again, the peers are trained before implementing these interactions. In one study using this technique, the children with ASD demonstrated long-term increases in recipro reciprocal social behavior and social initiations, as well as higher peer acceptance. The typical peers also maintained increased rates of social, in social initiations with the children with ASD. So both the child with ASD and the typical peers are benefiting from this type of strategy. Peer play is an intervention approach that's at the forefront of best practice to support social interaction for children with ASD. It highlights socialization, communication, and play with peers. So in this, um, this strategy, basically, the peers take turns using model communica communicative initiations, responses, and requests. They focus on establishing that joint attention through eye contact, commenting on activities, and identifying the communication attempts by the child with ASC. The goal is for the play partners to become more aware of each other's feelings and work through their differences as they play. An adult guides the child with ASD and the typically developing peer to play and work as partners. This technique has shown an increase in initiations, responsiveness to partners, and pro-social behaviors for the child with ASD. This is another strategy that can be implemented at home. In fact, it could have even greater potential um, at home due to more familiarity and comfort with the people and the environment. So the adult's role in peer play is to teach the typical peers attention directing behaviors such as showing or pointing to objects the adults should also scaffold, model, and create communicative opportunities for the child with ASD. So scaffolding is building from the child's current play level and advancing to the next level. So building upon those skills. So next we'll talk a little bit about behavioral interpretation. So this strategy focuses more on accommodating rather than remediating the differences in social behavior. It encourages environmental and personal supports for social interactions like sensory friendly spaces, reduced demands for eye contact and access to other forms of communication if needed. The adult role is to recognize, interpret, and respond to the communicative attempt. First, they recognize the behavior or intent to communicate. Next, they interpret what it means and respond by narrating using uncertainty such as I think or maybe. 
And finally, the adult can provide prompts and reinforcement for the child. An example of behavioral interpretation would be if the clinician said, I see you looking at the strings. Then to the peer said, maybe he wants you to play the guitar. This helps provide explanation to peers of some unexpected or unusual behaviors a child with ASD might exhibit. It also helps broaden the understanding of each other and what communication can look like. Behavioral interpretation facilitates awareness, understanding, acceptance, and empathy in peers who don't have ASD. And it's important to remember that these interpretations of behavior do not equal a direct translation of their thoughts and shouldn't claim to be. It's simply an interpretation of what the behavior of the behavior the child with ASD is exhibiting. Summary, the peer play, interpreting behavior, and peer-directed intervention are all ways to facilitate interaction for children with ASD. These strategies can take place at school or in your own home. So as the adult, your role is to train your typical peers in how to interact with the children with ASD, scaffold those behaviors, so build on those skills that the child with ASD already has, model appropriate social interactions, and create opportunities to communicate. So I included some resources on the screen for this Autism Speaks Toolkit. Um, contains information on, about social skills development. So just included a link to the North Dakota Autism Center here in Fargo, just as a general resource for people with autism. And here are my sources for this presentation.